In this demonstration, I'll show you how to use right endpoints to find an expression showing the area of a function. In calculus, right endpoints are used to approximate the area underneath a curve. So let's pretend we had a curve that looked like this, and we wanted to approximate the area from 0 to, let's say, 1. What you could do is you can find the area of very tiny rectangles that covers the span of this function, and taking the right endpoints of each of these rectangles, we could find their area and it would tell us the area. And this is defined right here in this function, where it tells us to add up a lot of very thin rectangles. This denotes sum, where we evaluate their height typically at the right endpoint. So let's do a few examples. Let's start with question number one. In question number one, they ask us to approximate the area of f at x is equal to x to the power of 2 between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to 1. Using the right endpoints, find an expression for this area as a limit. So all we're asked is to find an expression. Let's do that. First, we're going to find the change of, it, change of x. And the change of x occurs from 1 and 0, so 1 minus 0 over n. The reason why we're not going to change this n into anything is because we don't know how many rectangles there are. We're taking it to the limit as n approaches infinity. So we're just going to leave it like that. It's 1 over n. Now we're going to need to find x initial. And the way we do that is we take this number and we add it to 0. So 0 plus 1 over n. Now keep in mind that it's supposed to be this times i. So your x initial is equal to i over n. And this will represent your x when you apply it to this definition. So next, we're going to apply everything that we know into this definition so that we can find the expression. The area as the limit n approaches infinity is f at this i over n times 1 over n. Now, the function that we're focusing on is x to the power of 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace this with x to the power of 2. Now keep in mind this squared value. So we end up with the limit as n approaches infinity, the sum for this function now, this, remember, this represents your x, and we have to square this. We end up with i over n to the power of 2 times 1 over n. And that's it. Let's move on to question number 2. Once again, we're asked, suppose we want to approximate the area underneath f at x is equal to sine x between x is equal to 0 and x is equal to pi over 2. Using right endpoints, find an expression for this area. We'll start off with the change of x, and that is equal to pi over 2 minus 0 divided by n gives you pi over 2 over n, which gives you pi over 2 times n. Now we're going to find x initial. x initial is found by adding your initial x, which is 0, plus this times i. And this leads to pi i over 2n. Now we're going to apply this to our definition here. The area as the limit approaches n to infinity is the sum of the function. And we're going to apply that now. Pi i over 2n. Pi over 2n. And we're going to take sine x. Remember this represents our x and our function is sine x, we end up with the limit as n approaches infinity, the sum of sine, this thing, over 2n times pi over 2n. I'm just going to apply the rest, n i is equal to 1. Let's proceed on to question number 3. Suppose we want to approximate the area underneath f at x is equal to 2 plus x between x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 4. Using right endpoints, find an expression for this area as a limit. 
the change of x is equal to 4 minus 1 over n. And that is equal to 3 over n. x initial is 1, this time it's a 1, plus this times i. So we're going to apply this to our definition. The area as the limit of n to infinity, the sum of this thing, 1 plus 3i over n times the change of x, which is 3 over n. Now remember, this represents your x. So we're going to apply all of this to our x. The limit as n approaches infinity, our function was 2 plus this thing, 1 plus 3i over n, 3 over n. And we are going to simplify this. And only this part right here, we end up with 3 plus 3i over n, 3 over n. And there you have it. That is how to create expressions that denotes the area underneath a curve as a limit. If you found this tutorial helpful, please support our channel by subscribing or by liking this video. If you have any further questions, you may visit our website at biology-forums.com. We are an online service for students seeking free homework help. See you soon.